Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Before you do anything, especially if you're an existing customer of MDO 2021, please, please, please watch the video until the end because it contains crucially important information that you will need to be able to obtain and to know how to obtain your discount coupon code. So the long wait is over. My daily organizer 2022 is finished, tested and ready to be launched. By the time that you are actually watching this video, it will become available. My daily organizer 2022, if you don't know what my daily organizer is, it is uh, all in one place, a uh, replacement for your physically based organizer for your yearly, monthly, quarterly, weekly, daily planning needs. It's a fully interactive hyperlinked PDF document, not an app, so it cannot link up with Google Calendar or anything like that. It's a digital replacement for your standard paper-based organizer or a binder, if you will. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the improvements that the MDO 22 uh, contains uh, over its predecessor. And I'm gonna cover the basic functionalities for potential new users. Please do make sure that you watch the previous announcement for 2021 because it contains really good examples and detailed examples on uh, how to actually make best use out of the My Daily Organizer and how to get around it, how to organize yourself. And there's also tips and tricks in the playlist I mean, basically just watch the whole playlist and then you will be up to speed and you'll know how to install, how to handle and how to make the best use of out of the My Daily Organizer 2022. I'm very excited, very tired because I've been working really, really hard, um, but it's finally here. So let's dive in. And here it finally is. The 2022 version of the My Daily Organizer made possible only by you guys. So thank you very much. I've listened to a lot of feedback that you guys had. So let's dig in. And I'm going to be covering uh, mostly uh, basic functionalities, what is new with 2022. But for new users, I still do recommend that you actually watch the uh, original video that described 2021, because some of the detailed use type scenarios and how to actually get the best out of the My uh, Daily Organizer uh, platform would be contained in that video. So it would be beneficial for you to actually watch that one and this one and then combine the knowledge to get the best out of the My Daily Organizer. So let's begin. So you swipe and the first page after the cover is of course the yearly calendar which provides the year overview and it's an interactive calendar. So there are a couple of interactive points that you can see here. You can first go to different portals of the year. So you can choose which portal uh, you would like to go to. You have direct access to my notes and my lists. This is something that we will cover uh, a little bit later in detail. And then you have for each of the months, you can simply tap on the month name. And you can see that it's a nice and large uh, uh, touch box. And then you will be taken to the monthly organizer. And if you tap on any one of the days, then you will be taken directly into the daily organizer or the uh, daily uh, planner. Right off the bat, one of the biggest uh, uh, requests or complaints was um, lack of a complete support for the Sunday start format for the US customers and some of the Middle Eastern customers. With the 22, you will actually have the entire document is now in a Sunday start format, as you can see, from the yearly calendar to the monthly overview and the weeks themselves, they all follow the Sunday start, should you choose to do so. So Sunday start is now a fully supported format and you have a dedicated document if that is the standard that you like to use. Next, we have the quarterly overview. And this is where you actually can plan out roughly your quarters, right? So you have uh, your months, 
they're of course divided in <laughs> three months per quarter uh, and here we have similar type of access but firstly you also have uh, that's one of the requests that was added to have my notes and lists access on the quarterly overview that's been added so that's now also a thing uh, you can go back to your yearly calendar by simply tapping on two-year calendar and in the overview we still have access to each individual month unfortunately no there isn't a way to actually remember from which quarter are you coming to a month that's not a pdf functionality that i can have so there isn't a way to return to a quarter that you come from into a month or into a day so that's a platform limitation there's nothing i can do about that since these devices don't support javascript embedded into a pdf i've tried they don't work it so nothing i can do so you still have to go back to a year and then go to your quarter that you would like to then uh, each of these days is accessible and another uh, request that was uh, requested brilliantly formulated that is that the weekend days are of a different colored format which is now a part of the 2022 so that you can have a more easier overview and each of the days can be tapped and then you are taken again to your daily planner and of course you can simply zoom in on any area here and I can add my notes. Now, of course, these lines are simply descriptions or short reminders uh, like you would use it for these kinds of things. Now, if you want some uh, specific uh, longer type of notes, that's why my notes are there, because you can actually go to my notes, have a dedicated page there, uh, write uh, what you want to associate with the quarter, and then uh, basically reference to my notes 01 or my notes 44 because they are numbered and they now contain also an area where you can identify them and or define them if you will uh, by writing here next is the monthly organizer and it has the same layout as before but it does carry a couple of improvements and for that let me just go to maybe month of may so that you can see something so first the general overview uh, you have your weeks on the side the general touch area has been doubled now so it's twice as wide and you can uh, trigger it much more easily so that's something that was also uh, that i noticed and it wasn't a big request but i just wanted to make sure that that was improved the individual uh, days you can still simply tap on the number here and then you know Kind of go to your day that you want you can use the zoom feature and fill out your details here for the day if you so choose and more importantly you have two vertical panes of available notes uh, space which is there for you to organize your uh, month and basically determine your monthly goals and i've talked about this before in my original video what i like to do is use the notes projected goals for the month and then achieved goals right so then i have my uh, projected and here i would have achieved now of course you can use any way you want this is simply just what i do and then i can either list my notes or i can simply fill stuff out in here and then you simply zoom out and yeah your notes are there what i've already mentioned is that if you are using a sunday version of the entire document then you will have the sunday start on your month uh, planner or overview as well so it's a completely different organization of the calendar but yes the standard is there now if somebody asks like oh can i transfer between monday and uh, sunday well no because please remember this is a pdf document this is not an app so 
standard platform uh, PDF limitations apply to my daily organizer as well. You will notice one other improvement, and this was a uh, really, really largely requested uh, feature, which I fully agree with, and that is the ability to have these arrows on the side. Now, previously in 2021, you would actually simply swipe to the left, and that worked in the case of months, but in 2022, I've introduced these arrows on the side, and they are navigation arrows, and they are present throughout month, week, and most importantly, the daily uh, planners, where you can simply tap the arrow and go to the next month, week, or day in line. So that is something that uh, most definitely works, and something that I really, really like. The one thing that I don't like about it, and I've noticed unfortunately much, much later, once everything was finished, was that on the Remarkable, because I do not have the habit of uh, displaying this toolbar at all, um, this little X can overlap with the arrow so just be sure that you tap on the bottom side of the uh, arrow and then it will work fine so that's the only thing that i don't like so for 2023 uh, i'll definitely keep that in mind and make some sort of an improvement but just be aware of that that it's there yes i know it's there um, but i noticed it way too late to be able to do anything about it for this version all right, so from your month, then you've organized your month, you've planned all the things, then you can go to a week. And then we go to the weekly organizer, which has a similar layout like in 2021, but a couple of improvements and some important additions as well. So first of all, let's just uh, confirm that the navigation's arrows are here, so I can switch between week 2018 or whatever. So I can simply uh, navigate between different weeks that way, which is very, very cool. The other requested feature was that the days no longer go in a horizontal manner, but in a two columns kind of way, so that now we have vertical panes, and then you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In the top bar, you have the navigation buttons we talked about, standard, my notes, and my list shortcut. You can go back to your uh, yearly calendar, or you can actually go back to the month that you are coming from, which is also a nice thing to have. In the weekly overview, you have the areas here for which define every day, and every day is clickable. So you click on a day and you do then go to the day itself. Furthermore, each of the days also has a little bit of uh, uh, notes here available for you to add your notes for that day. Usually this will consist out of to do things or tasks or goals or anything that you may like because it's up to you. But if you want some suggestions, again, I would recommend that you go back to the 2021 video where I do explain this in a little bit more detail following the standardization. If you are using the Sunday start version of the document, you will notice that the weekly are uh, weekly pages or the weekly organizer starts on a Sunday and ends on a Saturday. And finally, there's one more addition here. Under the week number, you have the button called weekly notes. If you tap on it, this is a new addition that I've added a full page that is dedicated for uh, each of the weeks of the year, where you can simply use it as a page for filling out notes that you may need. From the weekly notes, you can go, you have your navigation buttons, and the navigation buttons go between weekly notes pages of the different week, right? So proper navigation. Then you can go back to the month, if you so choose, or you can simply go back to the week that you came from. So in case that these notes here uh, or the note space available is not enough or you want to have dedicated note space here, it is now an added thing and now you have that to work with as well. And finally, we now get to the daily planner. And a daily planner has had um, also a few improvements, additions, and changes. Right off the bat, the first thing that you will probably notice is that back in 2021 version, these two buttons were at the bottom. Now, the links to daily notes and the daily diary have been moved up where they should have been in the first place. <laughs> On the top bar, 
the one of the most highly requested features yes the navigation buttons are here and you can simply switch between days so let's say May 14th, May 15th, you go to the next day and it simply works. Furthermore, you have access to go back to the month that you are in. You can go to the week where this day is in. And you can also have access to my notes and my lists. We will cover the daily notes in the daily diary in a moment. I just want to talk a little bit about the organization of the page itself. It has retained the same type of organization. So we have our to do lists that you can fill out and you have a check mark so that you can have my task one, my task two. And once they are done, you simply check them off and you're a happy puppy. Additionally, you can have some short notes regarding whatever it is that you may want to have for that day. It can relate to the tasks, it can relate to the scheduler on the right side or anything else. So this is my notes area. Okay, but you're not limited to that as we'll talk about it in a little bit. One thing that I wanted to address was the scheduler. Now the scheduler has been changed and it has been changed in a certain way. One of the complaints was to have the 12 versus 24 hour format. Now at the, or at the beginning of it, I wanted to do that. And I started actually having separate versions so that you can choose 12 hour or 24 hour format. But then I received a couple of emails uh, from a couple of users that uh, really required of me to rethink this in a different way. And you will see how this is organized from, let's say, 5 a.m. or p.m. all the way down to 10 a.m. or p.m. Now, what is the idea behind this and why did I choose to do it in an unconventional way like this? Mainly because of a handful of emails and it's people who uh, work in medical departments or uh, even a detective <laughs> wrote to me as well and basically the not night owls. So the night owls wouldn't be able to fit uh, into a regular type of a scheduling format, which of course doesn't have room enough for 24 hours. And I wanted to find out a way how to accommodate whatever your daily schedule may be, whether you sleep at day and work at night or something else. So the thing that I came up with was actually this, so that you can start and schedule those things. And if your work day starts at, let's say 7 a.m., then you simply cross off p.m right? So you're starting and then you're working your 7 a.m. till 3 p.m., right? So that works. Uh, it's quite easy. And then you can just write here a uh, half an hour divider as well uh, as it would normally be. However, if you have a night shift or something like that, and your work maybe starts at 7 p.m. and then you work all the way to, I don't know, 3 a.m., that would be a very weird one. But you have the same type of approach. You simply cross off the format that doesn't apply to you. So all of them are there. And yes, I do lose the flexibility for the 24 hour uh, uh, standard. But unfortunately, I couldn't think of an um, easy and efficient way that would accommodate for the night owls as well. And this was the solution that I came up with for this version. Hopefully, I'll figure something out that's even better and more flexible for the future versions. But this is how it works so far. And that's how you're supposed to use it. And that was the thinking behind it. If you are kind of wondering, like, why, why like this? It's for the night owls. That's why. And then we have the relocated buttons for the daily notes and the daily diary. When you press on the daily notes, you will be taken to daily notes one. Why one? Well, now, because if you swipe to the right, you will have two daily notes pages per each day. In each of the daily notes, you have your date, you have uh, the ability to go back to the yearly uh, calendar, then you can also go back to your daily planner, if you so choose, or you can go to my notes in my list. Of course, it's exactly the same on both of the pages. You just have the indication which notes pages you're at. And you can also go to the daily diary. Now, the daily diary you can also access directly from your 
a daily planner. The details of the daily diary have been explained and how to use it and what's the logic behind it in detail in the video for the original 2021 version. So again, please reference back to that one. The general idea is a uh, buildup of self reflection over time, which will uh, improve your uh, self understanding, self awareness and will uh, help you differentiate your goals and how to achieve the goals long term goals, short goal, short term goals that you may be striving towards. In 2021 version, I offered two different layouts, but an overwhelming majority actually voted for this uh, and preferred this format. And since I added new pages in here, I had to truncate the size of the document. So that one went away, we are sticking with this version. And instead you have two daily notes available for you. And the same rule with the navigation arrows works on the daily diary as well, because you will be switching between your daily diary between different days, which are of course indicated here. So the whole thing has been kind of reorganized and revamped. I've reused things that uh, worked. I've tried to improve on the things that didn't work or could work better, mainly the navigation arrows, uh, the positioning of the buttons. And this is something that um, I hope that it will work. I know that it's a bit of a different approach, but it's something that should be quite easy, flexible to use. Finally, from any point in the document, so if you are in a monthly or overview, if you're in a yearly overview, if you're in a quarterly overview, or daily or weekly, it doesn't matter. From any point in the whole organizer, you will always have access to my notes and my lists. And my notes has, as I mentioned, been reorganized. The notes themselves are still exactly the same. So you get one full page of content for you to write. It is named as a note 07, for example. And then when you go back here, you are able to give that note a title or a description from my notes catalog, you can go to my list catalog and vice versa. And my list catalog has been improved in the same way as well. And my list themselves, they are like this as they have been, you have room enough for your task title. And then you have your tasks that you can tick off. Again, more uh, uh, in depth demonstration of how it actually can be used and some tips and tricks are available in the original video. You also if you do want you can simply swipe left to right. And yeah, that's the overview of the my daily organizer for 2022 new features, new functionalities, the improvements and all the other stuff that I've mentioned. And you'll notice that in the package, we'll cover that as well what you get in the package. But uh, the remarkable is a specific type of a device. So you have to use the remarkable dedicated MDO for it to actually work. Other versions, the books and super note versions will not work on the remarkable. So please be aware of that. They will the hyperlinks will be all over the place. And it's just something that won't work. So you have to make sure that you copy over and that you're using the remarkable version. If you do, you will notice that the sidebar doesn't interfere with the content apart from that dreaded X, which is now kind of piercing my eyes. But okay, I'll remember that for the next one. But more importantly, one of the high highly requested features as well. And something that I wanted to make sure that 2021 version had was the support for the left hand. Now, when I tried to do that, I discovered that there was an inherent bug in the remarkable platform, how it handles or its inability to properly handle cropped uh, PDF files that was not possible for 2021. But having known that ahead of time, it was possible for 2022. So that means that MDO 2022 is supporting both the right handed and the left handed orientation for the remarkable platform, you will see that in the organization of the files, you will have separate folders, which contain a different version for left handed or right handed operations. And yeah, now finally, I have also that option because that's something that I was uh, really, really looking forward to be 
being sure that this also is included. So full same functionality, it's just that you can choose whether you're left handed or right handed, it doesn't matter. And while we have the remarkable one here, as an example, you will notice that it functions exactly the same as the remarkable two. So remarkable one is of course, normally supported, and it works in the exact same way. It works equally well on remarkable one and remarkable two, just make sure that you're running the latest update, no betas and no added stuff that can actually or hacks that can interfere with the uh, underlying functionality of the remarkable platform. As before, my daily organizer has been made with three major platforms in mind, and it has been optimized and designed for that. So it's been it's primarily me meant to be used and it supports primarily remarkable books, devices, the whole range of the devices uh, that are note taking capable, of course, and the super note a x platform. So a five x and a six x. Now the books platform has a huge range of devices from 7.8 inch 10 three and then max devices, all of them are supported and they all work uh, exactly the same. So uh, the only thing is that you need to make sure that you're using the books version of the organizer because the layout of the user interface is different. And books actually allows for a nicely centered display because it has the ability to hide and show the toolbar and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the functionality is exactly the same, you simply tap on where you want to go and you have the exact same features available here for you to use as you normally would pinch to zoom also works, it will depend on the platform platform specific rules operations, how a platform handles a PDF, what's possible, what's not possible is going to depend on a platform that you use. And I'm going to do uh, platform specific uh, videos that will help you how to kind of organize your books device or your uh, super note and tips and tricks on how to actually use it uh, best. I already have that done for 2020 one version. So most of the stuff actually transfers to 2022 as well. So be sure to check out that video in the playlist uh, to be uh, on par uh, or basically up to date how to do this. So in here, I'm going to enable my quick scribble and add my uh, notes to the monthly view or whatever I may want to do. But uh, the cool thing with the books platform is that if the quick scribble is disabled, so I'm going to disable it now, then I can use my stylus to actually trigger the hyperlinks, which makes things really, really nice and easy to navigate as well. So it's something that I do personally like to use. Now remember, you can't do this on the remarkable. So the remarkable only triggers the hyperlinks via the touch. There were some users who were confused about that. So just to be sure that you know that you can't do that on the remarkable. Again, I can't stress this enough, you need to know your platform and to be aware of your platform specific operations. And yes, I will be issuing guides, uh, specific videos, dedicated videos per platform. But right now I haven't slept <laughs> uh, in a long time, I have a lot of obligations and things like that. I wanted to make sure that the 2022 version is fully tested, ready and uh, kind of done for you guys in time to, to be able to use it. Now, this is how it works on a 10.3 inch version. Now let's switch over to a smaller format, three, two, one. And here is the Nova brand new Nova Air, which I really, really love. And yes, the upcoming uh, in depth review will be coming soon. I just am uh, one person and I have a lot of things that I need to be doing, especially after the shoulder injuries stuff piled up. So now I'm going through all of that. That out of the way functionality is exactly the same on a smaller format as well. So now let's uh, choose uh, yeah, whichever it doesn't matter. And when I open it up, you can see that it works and looks pretty much exactly the same. Now, it depends on, of course, your display uh, controls as well. So there were a couple of uh, comments as well. It's like, oh, it looks pale or something. Well, that's because things have changed with the uh, 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 books platform a little bit. It has more 
uh, flexible controls especially for the display control so i can easily increase the contrast here now it's more contrasty but also be aware of the fact that if you're using a normal mode or a speed mode that will also affect the display contrast so some of the gray uh, colors will, will disappear and things like that so just be aware of that kind of stuff but other than that the functionality is exactly the same you tap on any of the hyperlinks and it just simply works and if every Everything is set up uh, so that you have pinch to zoom enabled. And then I have the option of showing my toolbar enabling. Oops, that's uh, not that one. Yep, quick scribble enabled. And then I can add my notes as usual. Okay, and it will work exactly the same on the larger format or on older devices such as Nova 2, for example. And you see that we have our regular My Daily Organizer appearing here and working normally on a Nova 2 as you would expect it to as well. And again, the same thing uh, applies. So pinch to zoom, quick scribble and all that kind of stuff, which is platform specific. But it transfers and it works on across the books range pretty much effectively. So as long as your books device ha is a note capable device, you will be able to use the My Daily Organizer, the books version on it successfully. And there is a dedicated super note version which supports the A5X and the A6X versions. What is different about it? Well, it accommodates for the upper toolbar here so it doesn't intersect with the um, content of the device itself. So it's centered and also allows for the space up there for the SuperNotes UI or basically the toolbar itself. One of the things that's really cool is that in one of the recent updates, uh, SuperNote has improved its hyperlink functionality. And not only is it faster, but it now no longer requires two steps. Before you had to type in and like on an iOS or uh, basically Note I believe the app is called, you would have like a go to page and then you tap. So you had to go two taps on each of the uh, hyperlinks. And this is the limitation of the platform that I was talking about. So there was nothing that I could do about that. But thankfully, they actually improved that. So now a single tap actually works for a hyperlink. And it works exactly the same on either of the devices. So this is something that I really, really like. And I think that it, in general, improves the overall functionality of the uh, My Daily Organizer on the A. X platform. Everything else works exactly the same. So you have your uh, navigation arrows and all that kind of stuff. It just simply works as you would expect it to. Um, as far as the zooming and all that kind of stuff, here we have again platform specific operations and limitations. So in this case, uh, yeah, I can zoom, but the zooming is a little bit more slower than on the books and especially than on the Remarkable. So that's something that can be um, to something that needs to be taken uh, into account. But yeah, the same, but general usage is the same, right? So you can simply zoom in, write your thing that you have, and then simply zoom back out. So yeah, the Supernova platform is fully supported as well. And it also contains the Sunday and Monday version. Of course, that goes without saying it's covered on all of the versions. And since version 2021 came out, we had a significant uh, other players enter the eNote uh, uh, battlefront of the devices. And one of the major contenders is the Kobo Ellipse as well. And I'm happy to say that it actually works as you would expect it to. It just uh, works normally because it has a similar type of layout like books devices. I would recommend if you're going to use it on a Kobo Ellipse to use the books version because it's nice and centered and you get the full screen uh, experience. Uh, functionality is really good. So the hyperlinks work as you would expect them to. Um, it thinks a little bit before kind of going there, but it's actually fine. It's I think it's quite, quite fast. The only thing is that with the navigation arrows on the 
sides, this is where the bookmark is as well. So if you want to avoid that, you could alternatively use the Supernote version, which moves this version, this um, uh, navigation panel a little bit more down. And then the accidental presses for the bookmark will be far less. But basically, if you just touch uh, a little bit lower on this uh, navigation arrow, you won't be triggering the bookmark uh, of the page itself. Other than that, you have your pinch to zoom, which again will uh, be limited by the platform's performance. So in this case, the um, yeah, ellipse is not that fast as far as the zooming goes and all that kind of stuff. So it's something to kind of keep in mind when you're dealing with this. Also, the uh, limitations of the platform are such that in the case of Kobo uh, Ellipse, for example, we don't have pen control, so we can't adjust the size of the brush and or the type of the brush yet. I hope that's something that they will improve later on. But the uh, added the, the end result is that writing is thick. So it's definitely usable, uh, but you just have to be aware of that you can't adjust thickness on a Cobolipsa yet. Everything else of course, functions as you normally would expect it to. So overall, I think that it works good on Koba Lipsa with the caveat that there is no um, ability to adjust the thickness of the pen. So that's something that you need to be aware of when um, using MDO on the Kobo Ellipsa. Another important contender is the Bukin Notea, which I reviewed uh, relatively recently. And it, of course, works well with the uh, My Daily Organizer 2022. For it, I would recommend the uh, Supernote version because even though it doesn't have the upper toolbar visible all, at all times, uh, the touch gestures are basically reserved for some of these operations and they take priority over the hyperlinks. So when I was testing it, I actually noticed that the books version would have a little bit of trouble here, especially with the uh, navigation uh, uh, arrows here to actually navigate between one and the other month. That's something that would occasionally trigger the menu here. And I found it out a little bit annoying, but as soon as I switched to the Supernote version, that was totally gone, and then it simply worked as you would expect it to. Um, single touch triggers hyperlinks as it normally should, and um, yeah, the platform limitations, I'm not sure if you have pinched to zoom on Otea, I believe not. So there is that limitation that you can't really pinch to zoom, but you have one of the best, uh, you have one of the best precision pens around and the ability to write really small and precise. So that's something that uh, definitely works and I didn't find it a problem. However, you need to be aware of that fact that as far as I know, there's no zooming uh, available at all. One of the ways around it would be actually to use it in a horizontal orientation and then use fifth to width and then it will automatically uh, kind of fit to width. And in that case, you have a very good overview and zoom view, whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm too tired to think about what it is that I'm writing. But that is a workaround that I found that it actually works very, very nicely. And the navigation is really good because you simply tap here and it goes down the page. And then you tap again and it goes to the next page. But then again, with the navigation pane and the organization of the MDO, you don't really need that. So it really works good on Notea in the landscape mode. I find it to be working best and it compensates that uh, lack of pinch to zoom and the zooming ability.
It also works on the Lightbook P10, and it's actually quite snappy for a device. I mean, even though the specs wouldn't suggest so, it just talks about how a platform is implemented. So even though it has similar types of specs, like uh, some of the other devices tested here, it's actually a bit more snappier in relation to how it actually responds to hyperlinks. So it's really, really snappy, goes very, very quickly, and it's very precise as far as the uh, detection of the hyperlinks go quite surprising the zooming is actually okay but the panning i have a bit of a trouble understanding how do i uh, pan correctly i haven't so uh, i can't do it in one gesture so i always have to zoom and then pan and also you should keep in mind that the pen does not trigger the uh, hyperlinks in fact it actually writes over them so same like the remarkable you can trigger trigger the hyperlinks only via the uh, touch input so for example if i zoom into here navigate over there and then i can I can start adding my notes. And while the writing has definitely been improved on the Lightbook P10, it's not the experience that I really prefer. I don't like the pen, but it does work. So it's not the best writing experience. I can't just change the pen and make it better, but it certainly is a lot better than what it used to be. And I think that um, for the MDO, it's definitely usable. Not the best, but usable. Uh, that's the writing itself, but that's again just a device specific kind of a, a application or a limitation. Um, everything else simply uh, works as you would expect it to. So I'm happy to report that it works as you would expect on the Lightbook P10 as well. And the littlest one of them all, the MobiScribe Origin, also works well with the My Daily Organizer. And it's actually quite snappy. It's a snappy little bugger, and it uh, does things that you would, yeah, as, as you would expect them to. I especially like the fact that it's very precise in detecting the uh, touch input, especially for such a small size. It's something that I was kind of worried about, oh, will it work or will it not? How will it work etc etc but it just seems to be working fine now as far as the zooming goes that's where things get a little bit kind of weird and there's a specific gesture that you have to kind of do and once you do it then it makes sense and the thing that makes sense for me is for example if i wanted to zoom these notes up to here i would place one finger in one corner the other one in the other and then kind of outstretch like that that way I get to have a perfect control of in one simple gesture how to actually get this to work and and I need to also enable my writing. Yes, so I should be actually in writing mode. That would have helped. Um, so once, once I am in a writing mode, then I can enjoy the origins writing feel, which I still maintain is probably one of the most enjoyable ones that I have experienced. I love how this thing writes. And now, yes, of course, this is a tiny, tiny format, but even so, uh, I think that it's, I was really, really surprised that it works uh, uh, right out of the bat normally. Now, the only thing is that you have to kind of, for the hyperlinks to work, you have to be in reader mode, then you go and then you navigate and then you kind of tap here and then it goes to where you want it to go. I'm still surprised, like, how can it detect so precisely the touch boxes? That's like really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know if, can I, can I, no, I can't really start them in the writing mode. So that's the only thing that I think is either I don't know how to do it, but you have that step one and step two, you have to navigate. And then you have to switch 
so that you can write. Uh, I hope that they are able to actually improve that a little bit because certainly it would have been perfect that you can stay in this mode and then simply do what you want to do. But yeah, at the moment, that would be the limitation of the platform. Nothing I can do about that, but you should be aware of how that uh, works. Alternatively, you could use maybe another uh, PDF app, but then your note taking capabilities would diminish severely because yeah, uh, the third party the apps don't support note taking as quickly as the purposely built ones for the refresh rates or the refresh methods of an e-paper screen. And this time around, uh, MDO 2022 is password unlocked. So that means that you are able to use it on a regular Android platform or an iPad, which I always also will show. But you need to be aware of that these platforms are not officially supported. So you can open them and you can use them but this is not something that i recommend and uh, yeah it can work i just wanted to show because there was a lot of requests the reasons why i don't recommend them because i simply haven't found a good app that would faultlessly work with adding annotations on a pdfs as e-paper uh, apps actually do so i've tried many other ones so for example here's a uh, xodo on android and for me that one was the best one that i can do of course the navigation is lightningly quick and everything works as you would expect it to so uh, yes that's that's the whole benefit of the device and pinch to zoom is like eons beyond and i love the interactivity and then you really see the benefit of uh, not using or using just vector graphics so that you can just simply zoom in as much as you want and there's no pixels there's nothing it's just simply always vectorized which is something that i really do like however um if i were to be super careful and uh, yeah tap like this so that everything goes away and yeah, and then we enter the problem the palm rejection uh which i don't like so uh in general it works but same as it is with other there we go i can inadvertently trigger some gestures that or add symbols and things like that that are simply not some, it's not something that I want to do at all. So that's a thing that I don't really like about either of the platforms while I was testing them. But then again, that's a platform limitation. I tried other PDFs and it behaves exactly the same. So it doesn't matter uh, if you use this PDF or another PDF, it's a app itself. That's how it functions. Now, maybe I don't know, maybe there's some settings because I really am not a user of these apps on these tablets. I use them for something else. So maybe you guys know of an app that will support this uh, better, but now it is unlocked and you can actually use it. However, there's, um, as I said, these are not officially supported. I don't have the capacity to test out every app on an Android or an uh, iOS. So that is the main reason why these are not a sub officially supported platforms. So you use them at your own risk and you have to figure out what's happening and why something is not working. The document itself is working. It's just how you make the best out of it is up to the platform. One of the things that I wanted to show was the nested uh, table of contents. So you have your year calendar, and on Xodo, you actually see that nicely. So you can expand and then you can see your monthly overview and go to a specific month should you choose to do so. But then again, you know, you have the, the, the whole point of the document is to navigate like this normally so that it actually works. But um, yeah, it's possible to do this. Uh, however, once you have an unlocked document, you also have the ability to break the document easily. And one of the easiest uh, ways to break the document is to insert a page, which is something that some of the apps on the Android and iOS platforms support. Now, that's another reason why these platforms are not officially supported, and there will be no uh, support offered for edited documents of any kind. So 
just because the document is unlocked, it is still forbidden for you to uh, edit it in any way by the terms and conditions and the copyright uh, license. So just keep that in mind. And if you want to edit it, it will most likely break because of the hyperlink interactivity and interdependentness. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But I wanted to unlock it so that people who know what they are doing and that they want to use it on their platforms, that they are free to do so. And here we have an Apple iPad. Uh, yeah, I really don't like this thing, but I took it so that I can test it out because a lot of people were actually asking about that. So because it's unlocked, it now works. So now it's in notability. And uh, yeah, let's see how does the functionality work. One of the things is like a lot of people are using notability and they are recommending it. And while it looks good and has great features, uh, one of the things that I noticed is that it's not that responsive. I mean, you simply swipe and then you kind of have to wait after the gesture, which is not something that I had on an Android, for example. And more, more importantly, it has a two-step uh, hyperlink function. And if it's a complicated page, then you actually have to wait for a little while. So more hyperlinks it has, more you have to wait to actually get to it. Once you actually get to a less busy page um you well how do i write okay so once you get to it and you activate the pen then you can normally write and i'll give the ipad this its palm rejection is like light years beyond what um, uh, android has uh, but then again the responsiveness is a little bit kind of weird and of course it's a little bit faster but essentially this also works quite nicely right and then you can zoom out and go about your business um, i tried out xodo as well it works with the platform limitations as well so i wanted to cover and show that the my daily organizer also works on the uh, Android and the app I, iOS um, platforms, primarily iPad, because yeah, on a super small iPhone, that's not something that would uh, be a usable thing. But just be aware of not officially supported. Yes, it does work. Do not edit it. Do not add any pages. Do not modify it, or you will break it and any kind of additions, modifications, there's simply no support. There's no support for uh, such kind of a thing. Hopefully, I believe that you should be able to understand that. The package itself is much more comprehensive and therefore it is larger in size. So what you download when you purchase My Daily Organizer, you will get an instant download email link, um, which will uh, allow you to download this My Daily Organizer 2022 zip, which now is 212 megabytes. So just be aware of that. Now, why is it so much bigger than the last time? Well, it's because you get a lot more stuff. So you can see that we are still all divided into books, platform, remarkable, and the super note itself. But for each of the platforms, you will have the ability to choose between Monday start version and the Sunday start version. And in each of those, you have three, um, three copies of MDO. They're all identical. The only thing that's different is the cover itself. So you can choose between three different covers. They are all exactly the same for Sunday starts, cover one to three as well. Now, the same thing applies for the super note. You have Monday and Sunday cover one to three. The thing that's a little bit different is the remarkable because it's so special. Um, in there, you will have also left-handed and right-handed. So you can choose if you're left-handed or right-handed and then go there. And then you have the same division, Monday start, one, two, three, Sunday start cover version one, two, three as well. Same as for the right-handed version, 
So something like that. So all in all, you receive a fairly com comprehensive package that will uh, allow you to use it across multiple platforms. And don't forget that you can use these on the different platforms that I've talked about as well. Just be sure that you are using, that you're copying the correct version to the correct uh, device. For more information on that, you can simply use the same installation instructions video that was issued for uh, 2021 because there is nothing different. Everything is exa exactly the same. The procedure is exactly the same. It's just that the now you have uh, more to choose from as in do you want Monday start or Sunday start version. So just be aware of that the Sunday version is a separate document from a Monday start. There isn't an option to simply switch between the options in a PDF because a PDF cannot uh, support something like that as a format. And finally, the uh, documents themselves have grown a little bit in size, but I'm really happy that I was able to actually keep it down. So the previous uh, version was around 9 or 10 megabytes, and this one has grown to 16 megabytes. Uh, why did it grow? Well, we have the addition of weekly note pages, so we have more pages, but the most amount that actually added, believe it or not, are the navigation arrows and added hyperlinks, because the hyperlinks themselves are data. So they actually take a significant portion of the uh, 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 content as well. So all of those combines, they led to an increase in size, but it's still super fast, fairly light. It's light enough that you can send it over internet if you want, or email clients uh, before you start filling it in, because once you start filling it in, depending on how much you fill in, it will grow in size, of course. Um, but yeah, generally the starting point is still small enough so that it's actually really, really portable especially for a document that's almost 1800 pages large so I'm happy about that all right so I've mentioned before uh, that there are some limitations and some things that you should definitely keep in mind before purchasing the my daily organizer and I just want to clarify them so that there are no misunderstandings and I think it's just important that you have complete information first and foremost MDO or My Daily Organizer is not an app. As such, it doesn't require installation. It's a simple PDF file that is internally hyperlinked. So basically you just copy the PDF onto your platform of your choice via the regular method how you would normally transfer any other PDF onto your device. And then you use it and that's pretty much it. It is not a template either. So it's not a template, it's not an app. It's a hyperlinked interactive PDF file. That's it. As such, it has to follow the same limitations that any other PDF has to follow on a given platform. So those limitations and the functionalities will vary, like how to zoom, how to not zoom, palm rejection, writing capabilities, all of that will depend on the platform itself. So you have to know your platform and you should look into your platform specifications or app specifications to understand how to do a specific thing. Just keep in mind, my daily organizer is a PDF file, nothing more, nothing less. It can't synchronize with other calendars because no PDF can, because JavaScripts are not supported by the eNote taking devices. And also, similarly, it can't store user preferences of any type. So what you can do on a regular PDF, that's what you can do with the MDO. What you can't do on a regular PDF, you can't do on my daily organizer either. There's a couple of warnings as well that I would like you to be fully aware of. First of all, you can't even make a purchase without understanding and agreeing that the policy is that there are no refunds. No refunds, you say? Well, I can't offer refunds because I don't have a way of recalling the product. So once you actually buy it and you get a link, um, I have absolutely no way of verifying whether you downloaded that file, did you delete it, did you do anything with it. So please be aware that all purchases are final. And one of the reasons why I'm making this comprehensive documentation and support is for this reason. I want you to be really, really sure that MDO is a product for you. And uh, for the reason of not being able to uh, add a DRM because these devices don't support digital rights management or any kind of other protection. Um, 
I can't offer refunds. Sorry, but I hope that you can understand that. Another warning comes for the MDO 2022. While 2021 was password locked to prevent what I'm going to talk about, I have decided to unlock 2022 because there was a significant amount of, not the overwhelming, but a significant enough amount of users who wanted to use at their own risk the MDO on a different unsupported platform. So as I already talked about, there are unsupported platforms, mainly iPad and Android tablets, regular tablets. So those apps are not officially supported and I do not offer support for that. However, I know that some people want to use them, so I wanted to check it out, show how it might work, what the limitations are, and most importantly, it is password unlocked so that you can freely try to do that. However, with that unlock come two important notices. First one is, even though it's unlocked, any kind of editing is prohibited, strictly prohibited by the terms and conditions and the copyright license for the use of the MDO. So you are not allowed to edit the PDF file, nor you are allowed to copy its contents or modify them in any way. That's not allowed. And therefore, any document that has been modified in any way that's not permitted will not be offered any kind of support. Why? Well, because any kind of editing, I can't even begin to imagine what kind of editing you might be doing. First of all, you are breaching my copyright in terms and conditions of licensing and usage. So that's not okay. Second of all, more importantly, uh, the likelihood that you will be breaking that functionality that has been carefully crafted and balanced in MDO is very high. For example, you insert a page, you automatically break the whole document. So if you edit a document, if you insert a page or anything like that, I'm sorry, but you're doing that on your own because I'm telling you very clearly here right now and the terms and conditions and the copyright notice says no editing is allowed. So even though you are able to do that, you're not allowed to do that. And therefore, if you do it, no support will be provided for that. When you go to mydeepguide.com slash shop, now you will have actually three products to choose from. Originally, it was just My Daily Organizer 2021, which is the original version. It's still discounted, same price, same everything. Then you will have My Daily Organizer 2022, which is the new version. Regular pricing is at $19.99 US dollars. However, previous customers will get a email with a coupon code that will offer a discount of 30%. So 30% loyalty discount for existing customers. Now, please wait for the email to arrive. I have uh, done extensive communication with the web shop functionalities and how it actually works. And I've come to understand that because there's actually uh, several thousand worth of users, that's a large volume for the service to process. And when you send out an email campaign that's several thousand of emails, they have security uh, measures in place, which mean that not all emails will be allowed to be sent out at the same time. And I have absolutely zero control over that. So the system itself will decide to send out a batch by batch by batch by batch and then test out and verify if it's reaching the addresses or not. So it's a safety precaution for you. It's a safety precaution for me. But unfortunately, it means that not all of the users are going to get the same email at the same time. However, I have been assured that it should happen fairly quickly. So but I couldn't get an exact quote on how quickly are we talking hours or tens of hours or not? So it could be even a day for all I know, because I'm doing this for the very first time as well. So please have some patience and a little bit of understanding so that we can work throughout this kind of thing so that you guys can actually get your 30% discount code for the existing customers. But basically the way it works is you don't have to do anything, just wait patiently to receive an email. And um, yeah, that email will contain a coupon code. Once you do receive it, then you can go to the web shop, 
order the MDO and apply the coupon code to get your 30% discount. Uh, Non-existing customers, if they are buying MDO 2022, they will need to pay the full price, which is 1999 US dollars. And uh, they will also have the ability, if they so choose, to choose a bundle. There's a third product that's going to be available now on the web shop, which is a bundle 2021 plus 2022, since we have a couple of months left in 21. Um, and that one can be available at a discounted bundle price for 29.99 US dollars. You get both of them uh, for that price. And I just want to mention one thing because there were some kind of not not a lot, but a couple of kind of uh, uh, um, concerns or questions beforehand uh, for My Daily Organizer 2021. European and international standard for a decimal point is a comma, not a dot. So on the website, you will see 19,99, for example, US dollars or the dollar sign, which is the US dollars. Now, the comma is, as I said, international standard for decimal point and it's a European standard for a decimal point. Some of the US customers were confused by that and they were thinking that it's $1,999, but it's not. I mean, uh, no matter how you turn it around, that's not how you write 1,999 because you would write 1, 9,999 US dollars. So I'm not fully sure that I understand the, the logic behind that, but it was a point of confusion for a handful of people. So I just wanted to kind of clarify it. No, it, it's not $1,999, nor does it, it's written like that, regardless of the comma or dot standard. It's uh, 19 comma or dot 99 US dollars. And finally, I wanted to just let you know what I'm planning to create now in the future so that you have some more supporting videos for the MDO 2022. I wanted to initially create all of them at the same time, but there was absolutely no way that I can do that because the amount of obligations that I have at the moment are just completely insane, especially after the, um, because of the shoulder injury and after the recovery, it's just piled up insanely a lot. So I'm still clearing things out. This was one of my number one priorities because I promised early September because of these things it has been delayed a little bit but still I wanted to make sure that it's out in September for you guys so that out of the way I also want to create supporting documentation and things that are going to be um, offered as supporting video guides are installation guide Q&A video and platform specific recommendations. So those are the things that you can look forward to that will come in the future and everything will be contained in the My Daily Organizer playlist as it is now on the web channel because that's the easiest way to find that content. And where to find the My Daily Organizer? Well, you simply go to mydeepguide.com slash shop and you will see the uh, 2021, 2022 and a bundle on offer there. Please make sure to also click on the product itself to read the description because it contains useful information. If you're a new user to MDO and then you have links to uh, additional videos and all that kind of stuff so that you are really, really sure that you know what you're buying and what it is and what it is not so that there are no misunderstandings or disappointments. Thank you so much for the overwhelming, awesome support uh, for the MDO 2021. It really inspired me to want to make a better and more complete version. And thank you for the suggestions, for the improvements and all of these kinds of things. I hope that you guys are happy. I hope that I delivered a good product. I certainly put my heart and soul into testing it because it's uh, uh, over 22,000 hyperlinks to actually test out and somebody will say well you just aut automatize really how do you make sure that every single link is actually a hundred percent working so there's only one way for me there's only one way manually with macros i want to see it with my own eyes that it's actually working so that's one of the things that i wanted to do and uh, yeah i made sure that everything works as it should because i think that you guys deserve a best i can do as a product I'm looking forward to your comments. I'm looking forward to you spending time with the MDO 22. I am looking forward to spending time with the MDO 22 and continue organizing my year and everything else, the crazy obligations that I have. Thank you so much for the support and thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.